Vision Christian Radio is all about connecting faith to life. From inspiring stories about the struggles we all face, to helping you understand the issues going on in the world, to clear and understandable Bible teaching, all peppered with great Christian music, the latest news, and even a few laughs along the way. You're about to experience just a small part of what we do. For the full experience, tune into a Vision Christian Radio FM or AM station near you. Listen online at visionradio.org.au or download our free app. On the weekend, we were on a bit of a road trip with the family and my son was reading this fascinating book uh, which had all sorts of uh, really amazing facts about animals and different uh, you know, parts of God's creation. And it was really, really amazing, some of the intricacies of God's creation. And while the book didn't actually give the glory to God, we were, as we as he was reading, we were saying, wow, isn't God amazing? Mm. And uh, someone that we've got on the phone right now, Andy McIntosh, has uh, done a lot of research into uh, the wonder of God's creation. And he actually uh, regards himself as a creationist, a combustion theorist, and an aerodynamicist. <laughs> so if you can get your tongue around that, you're doing well. But uh, good morning, Andy. It's great to have you with us on the phone. Oh, good morning to you. It's actually good evening here, but great. Um, I'm looking forward to coming out to your big country. So, Andy, how does one become a creationist, combustion theorist, and aerodynamicist? Well, you'd have to be me myself if that was the case. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend everybody else trying to aim uh, at this. It really just sort of happened in in a gradual way that I realized, first of all, what it was to be a Christian and to believe uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, Shortly after that, I went up to university and realized that if you believe in the Bible, you've really got to believe in the first few chapters. Otherwise, why do you believe it at all? So basically, I realized then what it was to to believe in creation. Um, Then as my career moved on, I went into mathematics, engineering, and then more particularly combustion. And uh, aerodynamics was also something I began to get involved in because I worked at the Royal Aircraft Establishment uh, in my career and done quite a few things with aeroplanes. So, mm. so well, that, I, I know that the... Um... Down ...as to how that, that all comes together. And mm. uh, my, my research honed in on combustion, burning, so I'm particularly interested in anything which involves burning. And, of course, the beetle mm. is something which burns. So there you go. So tell us about that, the Bombardier beetle. I mean, it's quite a fascinating little creature in its own right. But you've kind of, oh, yeah. um, I guess, borrowed uh, the the design features of the Bombardier beetle in order to actually um, you know, uh, create, um, is it a, like a microjet? Well, yeah, it's... Um it's absolutely tiny. The combustion chamber um, is burning uh, uh, two little chemicals. Uh, hydrogen peroxide is the oxidant, and then you've got another chemical, hydroquinone, and that's a hydrocarbon. It's, it's a, bit, uh, a bit unique, really, because the combustion chamber is only one millimeter long. Wow. And so these two chemicals are literally exploding out of the beetle uh, at 500 explosions per second. Oh, and wow. I'm going to be talking about that at the conference that I'm doing in January. And uh, I shall be saying a lot about the, the wonders of design that are found in nature. Uh, the bombardier beetle is rather comical because you don't usually think of looking at beetles, but uh, and you don't talk about exploding beetles either. I don't mean literally blowing themselves apart, but, you know, putting explosions out of their backsides. But it really does do that. <laughs> and it, it's it's amazing. quite an amazing creature. And even the fact that it does like this explosion without blowing itself up, because, I mean, obviously there's a lot of power involved with what it's doing and combining those two chemicals, it's so intricate. Yep. And, and, and yet people have, you know, um, accepted the fact that this just happened by chance. Well, yeah, you need to be fair to the evolutionist. Uh, he won't quite say it happened by chance, but in the end, that, to be frank, is what <laughs> it boils down to. But he's trying to argue that there's been gradual changes over a huge, long period of time, which has made a very sophisticated mechanism, which, as you rightly said, if you were to try and do it that way, you'd end up either blowing yourself to bits because you haven't got the right 
combustion chamber to do all this properly, or else um, you're going to be attacked by predators and be eaten. Mm. So you're literally between a rock and a hard place when it comes to this critter. So mm. That's amazing. <laughs> you're right. That there's just such design features. What we call that, the technical term for it, is irreducible complexity. Unless you've got everything working together, it's not going to work. And mm. that's particularly true with combustion burning. You don't play with fire. <laughs> no, you don't. And that just uh, testifies to the glory of God, doesn't it, with everything working together. So I know that uh, that has sort of been yeah. one of your more recent sort of discoveries. How has that journey kind of transferred over into the whole industrial jet space? How did all that come about? Well, that's interesting, Rochelle. Um, a company got very interested in what I was doing and uh, a Swedish company and they decided to back what I was doing. They heard me talking about it, some computer work that we'd done. Then they basically said, look, let's, uh, let's have you build one. Well, I'd never built anything before. <laughs> I was just a poor, you know, humble uh, uh, mathematician, really, <laughs> at heart. But so I got some good, clever engineers around me, and they, they built this thing about 20 times the size of the beetle chamber, so about two centimeters. Wow. And it we, it actually worked. We didn't copy the chemistry, make that plain. We copied the the valve system. And so it's a bit like a pressure cooker. You have everything coming in. It's just water, um, and it wants to boil. Then you close the inlet valve. You close the exhaust valve. And the whole thing can't boil properly until you actually let the exhaust valve go. And you get a massive shooting out of water and a steam. And it was just, it worked brilliantly. Wow. Um, That's incredible. Now, that, that, that valve system, so it's not chemistry at the moment, that valve system is going to uh, be used for fuel injectors, but it can also be used for fire extinguishers. Wow. So okay. Fuel injectors, right. obviously, you're using petrol. But with fire extinguishers, it's back to just using water. And there is other applications as well. Anything where sprays are important. Mm. And obviously, so like yeah, you know, like a sharp, you know, um, explosive spray, particularly. Yeah, that's right. If if you need something, uh, which is, you know, going to shoot pretty far for a fire, fire extinguisher, this is ideal. But it's also very good for something where you want very fine mist of droplets. And that's why the industry have got interested uh, for cars and also possibly for ca- uh, for aviation. <laughs> Although it, it's a bit, it's probably early days for actually getting it working for aviation application. But certainly for diesels and petrol cars, um, there's a lot of interest. Mm, mm. That's fascinating. Well, this is just a yeah, part but- of what you can uh, hear about at the uh, Creation Research Conference, which is coming up. In January, the Good News Creation Event, it's called, uh, from the 12th to the 14th of January. And, uh, Andy, you're going to be, I guess, the keynote speaker, one of uh, a few. I mean, obviously, uh, John Mackay, the creation guy, is uh, putting this uh, event on, but uh, you're coming out from the U.K., to speak, and the the Bombardier Beetle will be one of the uh, the sessions that you uh, that you share about. So it, it sounds fascinating, and uh, I'm sure that the people that uh, attend will be uh, just inspired by by what you bring. Well, that's very kind of you to say. I'm looking forward to coming. It's the 12th to the 14th of January, and it's in Brisbane, and uh, it's in the um, you know it's in an area where lots of people I think will be interested to come. So. I think there's going to be a lot of interest, and uh, if people want to come and hear John Mackay as well and other speakers, we've got some uh, very good talks lined up. And for Christians, often they're not, uh, they don't realize how important the issue is. It's great and fun to hear the science, but also there's a serious implication that we really need to stand firm on the Bible, mm. Mm. and that's going to be very much the theme uh, through the Good News Conference. Excellent. And we should mention, it's actually a free event. There's no registration cost at all. Uh, there will be an offering taken up to, to cover expenses, but you can turn up completely free uh, to the Good News Creation event. So it's going to be uh, a terrific thing. Obviously, during school holidays, maybe uh, take the kids along. Uh, they will be fascinated by some of the uh, topics 
that will be shared. You can find out more about it at uh, creationresearch.net. That's creationresearch.net. You can see the list of uh, some of the fascinating speakers, including Professor Andy McIntosh. And, uh, Andy, it's been uh, really wonderful to, to speak with you today, and we look forward to uh, you visiting our country in a few weeks' time. Well, I'm really looking forward to come. And do go. I would recommend uh, the listeners to go to the website to find more details there. And uh, most of the meetings are also running into the evening as well. So if they can't make all the meetings in the m- during the day, they should be able to make the public meetings in the evening. Excellent. So I think they'll really enjoy it. So that website again is creationresearch.net and it's the Good News Creation right. event that's happening uh, the 12th to the 14th of January. Andy uh, McIntosh, of course, the world expert in design, will be there along with John Mackay and many other specialists as mm. well. There's going to be a seahorse specialist there with a display, a, a medical uh, biologist, uh, a biblical historian, Australia's leading creation artist as well. It's going to be a huge event uh, lots and lots of interesting discoveries are going to be mm. made at this event, I am certain. So, Andy, thank you so much for your time today. And I've got to say, even just talking about that beetle then reminded me of a verse I love in Romans one twenty, which says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, been understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. And I think, uh, you know, just you sharing about your uh, beetle discovery there is a perfect example of how we can know God Mm. from looking at creation. So very much appreciate your time today and uh, look forward to maybe touching base when you're here in Australia. Well, I really appreciate your putting this on uh, for us because... uh you know, we, we really would like uh, lots of people to come and realize how important it is with the Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's that you just quoted that verse, um, uh, Rochelle, and that verse also has just two verses before it, the danger of suppressing the truth yeah, that's in right. unrighteousness. So yeah. we really do need to stand firm on the good book. Um, just say that the church it's in is City North Baptist Church and uh, things start at 10 o'clock each day in Brisbane. So folk are so welcome to come and uh, I think they'll really enjoy it. Um, It should be a great time. Before you go, thanks for listening. There's lots more great audio on demand or you can listen to us live at visionradio.org.au And remember, Vision is listener supported. Your donation, large or small, will help us continue connecting faith to life for hundreds of thousands of people across Australia and around the world. Learn more or donate today at visionradio.org.au.